In today's video, I'm going to be answering a question from Richard. Richard has asked the following question. My listening room is 19 foot long by 13 foot wide by 11 foot height on average. And I am in two minds about the Dali Rubicon 8, the Rubicon 6 or the Rubicon 2 speakers. I'm also considering their active Rubicon 6, Rubicon 2 and Callisto 2C also with SoundHub. Could you advise which in your opinion is the better setup? That's the question from Richard guys. Here we're going to start answering it. So first of all, for those of you who don't work on the Imperial system, Richard's room is 5.8 meters by 4 meters by 3.35 meters. In total, Richard's room is 2,717 cubic feet, which is the same as 77.7, it's a lot of sevens, 77.7 .7 cubic meters. So that's the volume of the room. Now, the first thing to consider there is that it's verging on large room territory. Okay, because we have to go by volume because sound pressure fills up a whole room and that's going to form the basis of the answer. Now, we're going to start with the passive speaker options. We have the Dali Rubicon 8, which is the uh, one Richard mentioned before, £4,199. Dali Rubicon 6, £2,249. Dali Rubicon 2, £1,699. Dali Rubicon 8, it's a very large floor stander with multiple drivers, okay? It has dedicated base drivers at the bottom. The Rubicon 6 is again a floor stander, but slightly smaller and less drivers. And the Rubicon 2 is a stand mount speaker with, uh, I believe it's a two-way uh, speaker with a tweeter and mid bass unit. Now, I think, I'm gonna go straight into it here. I think the Dali Rubicon 6 is the sweet spot. Here's why. First of all, the Rubicon 8, it's 87% more expensive. I think you're not paying for better sound quality. You're paying that 4,000 odd pounds, you're paying for a bigger output. The output that that speaker can produce is too much for your room. So you're, there's a lot of wasted money there. It's 2,000 pounds more expensive. What could you do with that money? So I can tell you a few things that you could do. First of all, you could buy a lovely amplifier, you could buy a lovely subwoofer, and you could even add in some surround speakers to your system if you ever wanted to. Another thing you could do is you could consider the flagship Epicon 2s for that money. So for me, I think that the value isn't there with the Rubicon 8s. Now moving on to the Rubicon 2s, the Rubicon 2s were the stand mount speakers. They are about 24% lower in price. Here's why I think the Rubicon 6 is better. First of all, you pay a little bit more for the Rubicon 6. You get better sound pressure levels. You get better bass response and bass extension. And you get the Dali hybrid tweeter, which is almost a, I think it's a patented design. Other speaker companies do something like that. But Dali was one of the first, I think, uh, in recent times to incorporate the hybrid tweeter. This is one thing about Dali I love a lot. And I think that the hybrid tweeter module on the Rubicon 6 will be better. The other thing with a stand mount speaker, the Rubicon 2s, you're going to need some really nice speaker stands. There's not really much point in paying £2,000 for speakers that Dali have tried to make very precise and accurate if you're going to be putting them on cheap stands. So you're probably going to have to spend at least a few hundred pounds to get some good ones or you'd have to make them yourself like a DIY option, which you can do, but it will take time out of your day. I would personally recommend with something like the Rubicon 2s, I would recommend a really nice subwoofer with it to compete against the Rubicon 6s in dynamic range. And ideally with subwoofers, you should really buy two. So you get a more even sound and bass response throughout the room. Otherwise, I think if you don't buy the subwoofers with the Rubicon 2s in a room that size, where it's verging on really a large room, it's gonna struggle, in my opinion, against the Rubicon 6. So here's why I prefer the Rubicon 6. I think it's more suited for your room. It's more comfortable handling anything you throw at it. So it could be music, it could be drum and bass music, hip hop music, rock music, it could be classical music, it could be jazz music. I think the Rubicon 6 is gonna do a better job of handling all those genres. Another reason why I think it's gonna be better 
is because it's gonna be no doubt better at handling movies. If you don't want a subwoofer, if you don't want surround sound speakers and you just wanna watch movies in stereo mode, then the Rubicon 6 will be absolutely fine in stereo, stereo mode. It has the bass response, it has the sound pressure level to do a good job at that job too. So why not? I think the Rubicon 6 is the best overall. I think it's the most versatile option and I think it ticks more boxes. Let's move on to the active speaker options that Richard asked earlier. So we talked about the Dali Rubicon 6C. The price of that is £5,540. Rubicon 2C is £3,800. The Dali Callisto 2C is £2,399. What are the upsides of active speakers? Well, first of all, they're easier to set up. Secondly, they look cleaner in the room because there's less wires around, there's less devices around, so in that respect, they are better. Also, technically, they are meant to be better because the company has gone through the effort of pre-matching the amplifier to the speakers. So Dali ha have an idea of what it should sound like and they've gone ahead and done that and every single Dali active model will sound identical in theory. The amplifier is inside the speaker so there's less chance of signal interference as well and that's because there's no ex external speaker cables, there's no long runs of cables which can degrade your audio signal and this is why most professional studios use active speakers. But here's why I would not recommend active setups. First of all, you lose the option to change your system. So being an audiophile, if you're an audiophile, I'd consider myself an audiophile, the whole fun of being an audiophile is changing the components. Your tastes, just like in life with food and, and anything, your tastes change with time and same thing happens with audio. When you take away the ability to change the amplifier, you're taking away the ability to change the sound of your system. Arguably, you could say you lose the passion for the hobby if you can't even upgrade the amplifier. Another downside of active speakers, the retail values are worse. A lot of people aren't looking for active models unless you're a professional studio. Most people who are in this hi-fi market, they're not looking for active models by Dali. This market contains consumers that are audio files and video files. If you sell your speakers, you're more likely to lose money on those Dali active models compared to the passive models. Another downside of the active models is that you're paying a whole lot more money. The reason why is because you're paying Dali to match the amplifier to the speaker and put the amplifier inside the speaker for you. That doesn't come free. The Rubicon 6 the active version is £3,300 more expensive than the Rubicon 6. What can you do with that money? Here's what you could do. You could buy a better amplifier. For £500, you could buy a Class D Hypex amplifier. This is a modern Class D design and it competes with amplifiers three or four times the price. For all you guys out there who don't like Class D amplifiers, I'm specifically referring to the Hypex modern Class D designs that don't really have much of the drawbacks compared to the traditional Class D amplifiers. The thing I don't like about Dali in this part of the market with the active speakers is that they don't really publish much data on the amplifier that they're putting inside the speaker. They're saying it's a Class D amplifier, so Dali are using a Class D amplifier in their uh, active models, but it says it can maintain 250 watts output for five seconds. So basically what they're saying is 250 watts is the peak performance, but what about the average performance? What about the RMS wattage? We wanna know that too. I can't see anything on the specifications listed on Dali's website that tell us what that amplifier is actually capable of. Another thing you could do with the three grand or so that you save, you could buy a really nice subwoofer. One example, the SVS SB3000. It's a sealed box subwoofer. I believe it's 13, 14 inch. The cone is 13, 14 inches. It can achieve a, a true 20 Hertz bass response. And I think it's gonna be a perfect match with the Rubicons. This system will deliver a better bass response than any floor stander you could throw at me. And it costs 1,275 pounds to buy the SVS SB3000. Another thing you could buy, well, how about a cruise to Hawaii? Does that sound good? So in conclusion, the point I'm trying to make is active speakers, they cost too much money 
and you get too little in return. Passive speakers, on the other hand, they are a little bit better value for money. You can upgrade them, they're more versatile. You can make them sound how you want it to sound. And I th think from the list of passive speakers that you sent me, I think the Rubicon 6 was the best and the safest option and the best for your specific room. Did you like this video? I hope you did. I tried hard for it. Show us a bit of love and give us a thumbs up. Also, read what it says there. If anybody has any questions, leave them down below. I'll get back to you. I might even make a video like I've done for Richard here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.